to get it up on my phone. So I'm just going to have my phone down here if people want to ask questions and stuff like that. All right, and we're live. Cool. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. How's it going? Yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, back at your two o'clock session, we're looking at should I invest in education and learning in electronic dance music? And we're probably going to be quite biased here, um, but we're going to lay it out for you and you're going to hear a lot of great information um, from some very experienced and talented panelists. Uh, we're going to be raising money still today for BLM UK, Women in Music, Mind and Help Musicians. Um, they're all charities that sort of support our industry in, in different ways uh, and outside of it as well. Um, if you can donate, uh, we'd love to. We've, we've gone over £100 now, which is wicked. Um, the link's going to be in the description. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much. And I'm joined today by Danny and Mad Villa. I don't know if you want me to call you by your actual name. Um, Either is fine. Yeah, Doesn't Queen matter. Mad Villa for now. It's such a cool name. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you. I think Mark's going to be joining us uh, in a little while. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you'd like to uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewers and uh, just talk a little bit about what you're involved in. Who's going first? In you, mate. Go on. All right. So obviously my name is Mad Villa. My real name's Adrian. Uh, I'm originally from California, but I moved to England about eight years ago. And since then, it's kind of been, obviously, I've been producing since I was living in California, but since I came to England, it's kind of been just like a wild journey, just going through these different uh, sounds and styles until I ended up coming to a point where I was quite like searching what I wanted to do, like what my sound was going to be. And that was after, well, during going to uni and after I didn't get that clarity until that point. So it was a lot of experimentation up until then. And then when I actually started going to uni, it started, things started to make more sense because I was being surrounded by people from different backgrounds who had different ideas and like knowledge that we all kind of came together and had our different ideas and that, and it kind of helped shape me as a person. So yeah, I'm now in a position where, you know, I've had releases on Strictly Rhythm, Tool Room, uh, Sante's label of Vatra, Food Music, I've engineered for labels like Hot Creations, Tool Room, Nervous, uh, quite a few others. I do some rappers as well. So this this whole career has kind of developed into what it is now off the back of going to university and studying the craft. Right. Okay. Like I said, I've mentioned this before we went live, but there's an absolute machine in the studio. <laughs> and uh, his productions are uh, very telling of that. Um, but yeah, um, Danny, do you want to uh, give us an introduction about yourself? Yeah, I can't talk about that though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> definitely can. <laughs> um, so I started off, um, basically started off being a raver in the drum and bass world and the electronic music industry. Um, but kind of turned my hand to uh, doing gig reviews. Um, learned that that wasn't paying anything. So slowly but surely started um, turning my hand to a bit more of the journalism side of things, combining, I, did, I got a degree in English and journalism, so I tried to put that to use. Um, did a left turn into uh, hospital radio, so patient requests, lots of Elvis Presley. Um, so I did that for about a year, which was a um, really good experience. Spent six months hating it, then realized it wasn't about me, it was about, it was about the listeners, and about the patients, uh, and really got into it, learned how to uh, basically cut my teeth um, doing mm. that, figuring out how you, how you write a, use a sound desk. Um, and uh and after that got in touch with uh, brum radio that are uh, kind of a local independent station about five years ago and i've been doing all sorts of stuff with them and they're really how i developed what i have now which is this kind of broad skill set uh, across the board of the music industry it got me um it got me working as a booking agent for almost two years um looking after a bunch of uh, uk uh, drum and bass and uh, kind of electronic artists taking them across europe um, it also uh, got me in the front door of, of BIM Birmingham, which is um, part of the BIM Institute group that have colleges all over Europe now. I think there's Hamburg and, and Dublin and Berlin. They've got um, colleges. So I've been working with them for a year, first off, starting doing stuff with, um, you know, putting together radio shows for their students and helping them to curate content themselves. That got us interviews with the likes of, oh, who was it? Who was it? Nathan Dawes was one of them uh, oh, yeah. and, a, yeah, yeah. and a bunch of others. Yeah. That was quite nice and then after that they kind of said right well you know your stuff so let's um let's check you into the deep end and give you three courses to teach so i've been doing that for the last year which has been amazing fun 
And off the back of all of that, I've developed even more contacts and have gone into music consultancy. So I kind of look after and assist artists with small music PR campaigns uh, around the city and around the country. So, yeah. Amazing. That's so cool. <laughs> Um, I should probably say a bit about myself because uh, I realise I'm on this panel. Um, yeah. I'm probably the least prepared, but it's about myself, so it can't be too bad, right? Um, I'm Sanuke Lucasan. Um, I started in the dubstep drum and bass scene, probably similar to Danny. I was called Assassin, um, very heavy dubstep stuff. Uh, Travelled a lot for gigs for that. Um, uh, I really loved doing that. I think the scene sort of died away, or, or my taste sort of changed, and I wanted to constantly develop a sound um i moved into more housey stuff uh it's kind, that's kind of where my um love for electronic music had started um uh i was a huge fan of mad villa right back then <coughs> 20, 2014 so um yeah. got some interesting questions to ask you later about that yeah that was pretty um, uni so yeah uh it's interesting that you were, you were saying um that you didn't feel you had the sound together then and i was like oh, it's so good um i think i had a conversation a few years ago similarly to that as well yeah um, it might have been at ad yeah <laughs> um i continued doing working as Zuka san um playing a lot of gigs all over working with relentless uh, and different brands like that um and then I've, I've kind of taken a few years out from everything uh, i think i got sort of bit lost um with what i was doing and why i was doing it i was kind of getting a bit too money driven um where as I said before, I moved away from dubstep because I wanted to sort of develop uh, creatively and develop a more, just develop my sound. Um, and that's what brought me to uh, build Beat, uh, Beat Brings Us Together, um, a podcast just sort of, I like talking to people, I like networking, I like connecting with people. And that gives me a chance to do that while um, other people get to share their journey and their story. And hopefully people can learn something from that. Um, but yeah, I did my degree in music um, technology uh, in, and I graduated in 2012. So it's telling of how old I am. And now I've returned to education to do a master's in events management at uh, BCU, um, that's Birmingham City University. Yeah, like and people. that's allowed me to kind of explore um, a lot. And recently started a show on Brum Radio, um, thanks to Danny, who's also kind of been uh, a big inspiration behind me starting Beat Bring Us Together anyway um, from hear him on the radio um so yeah both you both kind of like very big inspirations to me personally um so hopefully i won't um fanboy uh, too much it's <laughs> <laughs> all good it's all good um yeah so uh i guess start uh question for you probably danny um you're, you're very into industry experience um you're working with a lot of students how important do you think it is um for students to have this industry experience because you know telling someone how to do something is one thing um but without having that necessary industry experience they might not be ready for to enter the workplace how important do you think the sort of courses that your um leaders of do you, how important do you think that is well i mean if you look at like the stuff that i've done over the years i i mean i know a lot of people who probably didn't go down the um the, the kind of the music education route they just fun they felt like they fumbled around for a long time it's kind of how I felt when I speak to a lot of other students when I speak to other tutors um, you know at, at BIM or at other um, uh, institutions the main thing is that we, we all feel like we did it the same way which was you know we just fa we just found a bunch of paths I was talking to someone the other day about this we, we did one thing kind of went oh okay this is something I enjoy doing happen to be doing something else or, you know, come across something else, start doing that and slowly but surely build up that portfolio with sometimes no intention. For me, there was, uh, you know, a combination of some good luck. There was um, a lot of asking people for reassurance and am I doing this yeah. the right way? Is this the right thing to do? Should I be doing this? Um, and over time, you know, weeded out the bits that were kind of, you know, sideline things that didn't need to be focused on and, and kind of found the bits that work together and over a period of time all of those just melded into kind of the stuff that i'm doing now i also forgot to say that i did some introdu bbc introducing and I have a podcast as well so i think maybe that's that whether where you're talking about the inspiration came yeah but all of those things um i would say were india industry experience for me the nice thing is that there are university courses now that are offering you know almost all of those things and it means i think critically it means that you don't have to be i mean i wasn't taken advantage of i remember being asked about six or seven years ago asked while i was doing loads of writing 
um, whether I wanted to intern for Ram Records. Now, Ram Records are one of the kind of big three or four big labels in drum and bass, um, UK based. You know, I was looking up yeah. to them. I loved reviewing their music. I loved listening to it. And for them to ask me that, I was, you know, I was really taken aback. I was like, this is amazing. This could be a great opportunity. It was going to be unpaid. It was going to be six months and it was going to be in London. I, I said, no way. There's no way that I can afford that. I don't come from that background. I'm not that middle class kid who can get mommy and daddy to pay for that. <laughs> um, even if I sound well spoken, it ain't happening. Um, and they asked me again six months later and I said the same thing to them. I was nervous about making that decision for a long time. But I feel like that for a long time has been the only alternative. You know, right. if you want to get experience in the industry, you have to do it for free until you've earned your stripes. And it's, it, I mean, it's a difficult decision and a difficult conversation to have with people, whether or not you should go down that route and be free labor for six months and sleep on someone's sofa. Um, and I'm kind of glad I didn't do it. And now looking at it, I'm really glad I didn't do it. I got involved with an independent station. I like searched, I found the people that you need to speak to. I did that networking and I maintained those connections. And I think all of those things are part and parcel of what should be taught on good, on good industry experience courses. Um, about developing those networks and maintaining them. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's so important because say you'd gone for that six-month internship, is that what you're going to keep doing again and again? You're like, oh, that was good, but then I'll, I can do this next one free for that. And then where where does that journey? And I know I've, I've been guilty of this in the past. It, it's really important to develop those skills early on in your career um, yep. rather than because you could just, it just never ends with it. It's a never ending cycle. Mm. Um, I guess uh, following on from that, it's kind of a question I was asking at Mark, but it, I, th I think uh, yourself, Adrian, and me could sort of answer this. Um, going from this, you want industry experience, and Danny was mentioning there's, there's these sort of courses now where you can be more practical. Um, yeah. How has that sort of impacted you and your career? Have you found the practicality to be a real a positive to your career? Well, I've the practicality of the education of, of, or? Of, yeah of the education of the course yeah so it's like it's one of the things where it's like you're not gonna you'll get out of it what you put in so you have to decide what is it that you want to focus on what do you do you, you want to be an industry person you want to do management you know publishing that kind of sort of stuff or do you want to be a technological person where you're doing engineering production you know, that sort of stuff where you even more advanced or you want to do like audio engineering where you're actually like building components and putting stuff together so you have to really decide what your lane is and decide yeah. right how driven am i as an individual do i need to do I, will I benefit from going to uni and being in an environment around other people and being a, submerged in it or can i do this on my own you know maybe with some paid classes online you gotta really just decide like what type of person you are and what you want to get out of it because i knew so many people on my course they loved music and they loved making it but they didn't have the drive to do the technical work and the you know the hours and hours of experimentation you have to do on your own not in a lesson and they just didn't have that so they didn't some pass you know some dropped out but i think as long as you know what you want and you know what you can get out of something and you think it'll be worthwhile for you is you know it's very beneficial yeah um i totally agree there um i think on my undergrad especially music technology a lot of it was practical and, and production based uh and i think i just remember sitting there day in out day in you know all night all day no need to sleep um just practicing and practicing and yeah it's kind of like the time that education has given me as well as you know the actual learning hours you're getting it, it's the time outside of that um the practice time that is really benefiting yeah. you not, not only that you have the aspect where like i said you're surrounded by mm. loads of people who are doing the same exact thing as you into the same thing so just being in that environment where you have all this like creativity and positivity like and in like enthusiasm around you it rubs off on you so it then pushes you to do do more whereas when say for instance when i'm back home in essex there's not really many people around here who are like into it to the level that i am so if I found myself staying here and not going to uni, I felt like my progression would have been a lot slower because of that. Yeah. I think um, one of the really interesting points is that, um, have you heard of the phrase of like 10,000 hours of practice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. idea that like you, you can master most things if you, if you just put the time in and you're, you're there. And I think a huge part of university study is independence and learning that independent study. And 
learning to not just do it as a thing that you do maybe on the weekend, but it's that thing that you're pushing away at and banging away at until you feel confident enough that you can, you know, rely on it, take it outside, go to go to events and showcase your music and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, definitely like going back to education. I think before that, I was at a real like low point in my confidence and just, you know, life's so quick. Someone mentioned it earlier in the last panel, like, life's like 100 miles an hour, especially pre-pandemic. And you just, I didn't really know what I was doing. Didn't know where I was focused. I think I sort of lost a sort of group where I could feel um, confident in improving my abilities. But going back, it's just like you said, Adrian, you know, you've got that contact group of people who are all, uh, who have all made this choice um, to invest in themselves yep. uh, and have, have that independence of freedom to explore and, and, and it does instill a confidence in you. Uh, it definitely has in me um, to tackle kind of anything and go forward and, and do things like we're doing today. Um, it's, it's been a really, uh, a good experience so far. I mean, I'm not finished yet, so it might be terrible the last month. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely I'm sure you're on the right path, man. Thanks. <laughs> definitely difficult in a pandemic, but just, <laughs> you know, it's got to finish at some point. So I'm just going to have to get on with it. Um, I guess speaking on this point in a way of, you know, I made this choice to go back uh, and I I just took an initiative on my own life. I haven't been, I wasn't fed it from school because although I went to an undergrad, this was my own choice, you know, doing a master's like six years on from finishing. Um, How how important is it in general, do you think, to, for people to take that initiative, whether they're going into like uni or just getting industry experience or going to book themselves on a, on a practical course, um, is it, is it important for people to take that initiative and, and, and try and get a step ahead in their career? Like, undoubtedly, yes. Undoubtedly. Initiative is such an important word. Um, for the courses that I'm teaching, a couple of them um, involve basically looking at getting work experience placements for these students. But the onus is not on me. You know, if they're yeah. in, in an absolute crisis and, and for whatever reason, you know, I don't know, a pandemic happens, um, then maybe we can <laughs> then maybe we can help out. But until that point, the ball has to be in the student's court. And, they, you know, with universities, as with anything, the, um, the, the, the passion will shine through, but the initiative has to be something that they take. When you look at organizations, you know, if I hadn't been writing those reviews and attached to a magazine and sending them to uh, people, you know, sending them back to Ram Records um, about their artists, you know, uh, they wouldn't have known who I was. That was initiative. And I think a huge part of, of, of getting your name known is about standing out and being able to be that person that goes, you know what, there's an opportunity there. And if they haven't replied, I'm going to send them another email anyway. I'm going to take that initiative yeah. and, and, sh- and, you know, give them another nudge, remind them. We're all busy music people, we're all busy in the world anyway. You know, I constantly need bloody reminders. I need like two reminders for an email. <laughs> yeah. Expanding on that as well as the initiative part of it is like, obviously you hear a lot about being at the right place at the right time that doesn't happen unless you put the initiative in. So if you are the type of person, you've got skills, you know, you've got something to offer, but you're kind of reserved and hold yourself back. You might miss opportunities because you're not taking the initiative to put yourself, put yourself out there, put yourself forward. No one's going to know about you and what you have to offer unless you take that initiative and really show them. And yeah. you'll increase your chances of being in the right place at the right time. I think, uh, sort of a point off that i think it, it's a good idea to to grow resilient um and there's not a better time to do that than now um because you definitely got a resilient now and yeah and don't, don't get disheartened about like people saying no just just keep bothering people and, until they until they answer you 100 <laughs> percent. people are going to say no all the time i get no's left right and center from people that really respect me and love what i do but they still you know give me the no's because they're not going to you know, if they think that is something that deserves a no, they're going to tell me straight up rather than, you know, leading me down this path where they're giving me hope on something that they're not 100% on. So you really got to expect that and not let it push you back or hinder you from doing what you need to do because it's going to happen. Even the big, big DJs, they get no's all the time. Like, it's just something that you have to kind of accept and yeah. learn from. Um, I'm interested because you mentioned at the start that uh university kind of gave you a, a space to pinpoint where you wanted to go forward what is yeah. it about it that, that set you on a path that you felt so for me it's with? like i've always been very technological i've always been very nerdy with like the music gear and stuff like that like i love the equipment i love like getting my hands on something new and playing with it 
but before uni i didn't really have the i had enough knowledge to like you know i had a few bits on my house and but it wasn't to the extent of where you know i have my studio now and i have all this like analog eqs compressors synths all that stuff like it wasn't to that level and i felt like prior to uni maybe i wouldn't have been able to because i know me as a person i'm very i have to be like in it like i can't i'm it's hard for me to like sit at home and like try and like mm. teach myself all the ins and outs of something without being surrounded by it, if you know what i mean so when yeah. i'm at uni i've got i'm studying music tech for my undergrad i've got access to fully equipped studios of all sorts of sizes 24 7 you know i'm able to go in and experiment and learn things practically you know by not being told on paper but actually going in there plugging in things seeing what happens and I didn't have that access when I was when I was at home. Like I didn't have access to any nice studios that I can go and just do my thing in. So I think the big thing for me was just not so much the course itself, but just being in that, being in the facilities to be able to do what, experiment and learn and you know grow and develop. Yeah, um, yeah, it's really cool. I guess access is a is a great thing that comes with a lot of these institutions. Um, I jump yeah. in. I think I think a key phrase is like industry standard. Um, yeah, like yeah. if you can find an institution that has some stuff that's an industry standard, like why the hell wouldn't you? You know, if you're if you're in Mad Villa's situation where you're, you know, um, you know, maybe around people who won't be as motivated, don't have access to, to that um, technology. Um, fine, you can you can you know have access to online tutorials, and but if you don't have the technology, like yeah. you're you're kind of stumped at the first hurdle. So. I think, I mean, that's something that gets not drilled necessarily, but it's mentioned a lot with the institutions I'm connected to is that, you know, this is industry standard software that we're giving you access to. 500,000 pound suites, for God's sake, like, you know, more expensive stuff than I would, will, you know, be keen to put my hands on. Um, but it's stuff that gives them access. I remember working with a, with a photographer a few years ago who was, you know, sort of a blessing and a curse. She was able to access all of this industry standard uh, equipment and, and technology, but she had to get her... She had to get her work up to scratch enough that when she left university, she could hit the ground running because after yeah. she left, then the, the technology leaves unless, you know, you, you, yep. you are connected to good alumni and, and whatever. Um, so I think it's, it can be a really good kind of vantage point to get yourself up that springboard to allow you to kind of excel. Yeah, that, yeah def definitely for me. I've, um, I've got access to a lot of radio equipment at uni, a lot of camera stuff. Uh, I'm doing event production, but uh, event management, but I still get to use all this great kit and, and teach myself and, 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 and learn from uh, some of the tutors there. Um, yeah, I know Madvilla yourself, you've, you've done some um, videos uh, on production and you've given it something back. Danny, particularly yourself, you're literally tutoring people about industry experience. How important do you think it is to give back um, to people who, who are wanting to learn? Um, I think it's about paying your dues and also about a quite important thing is about not burning those bridges that you build on the mm. way up. Um, crucially important um, and kind of goes back to a networking kind of ethos, I think, is that, you know, if you if you do your work on the way up, you develop your contacts and you're in a position of, you know, whether it's authority or an ability to be able to teach people. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Why wouldn't you, you know, bring in your contacts and allow them to give their expertise um, and, and help them? Uh, I think the way that I see it, I've seen it, and I'm sure you guys have as well, uh, people in the music industry that get that break that, that, make, that makes them, and then they just, like, get rid of all of their contacts. That they <laughs> all the time. All, it's every, crazy every to year, see every it. Every year, yeah. there's someone that I'm very cool with, friends with, you know, we're talking, trading music they get their little break and then that's it don't hear from them you know don't no acknowledgement and it's just like come on like i understand you're, you're busy now and you're doing things but like you're not that busy to where you can't you know communicate yeah. with someone you've been communicating normally with before i think it's just about being humble and knowing that like your 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 success isn't going to last forever so it's it, you know i see it in the way as you know you, if you if you have your your gradual inc incline your gradual rise to success your gradual rise to having more connections and developing your network um looking after them will help that decline that will come eventually afterwards you know no one's gonna go out like you know i don't know freddie mercury or elvis presley it's not you're not gonna always end on that high <laughs> it's much better to develop those and maintain them because that cushion coming down is going to be so much smoother 
Yeah. 100%. And I always feel like, you know, some people, it takes a long time for them to be in a position of authority. But over the years, you'll definitely be in a position to at least help teach others along the journey. So for me, it's like, you know, some people might think I have a position of authority. I don't think I do. But at the very least, I do try and help spread knowledge as best as I can. Anyone hits me up and they need help or something, I'm always there to give feedback. I'm always, you know, I do the production videos. I do the little uh, feelers for things for just people on Instagram and that. So it's just nice to be able to teach back what I've learned and help people from making the mistakes that I had to make in order to get to where I'm at. Yeah, that's very true. Um, it's you kind of people need to learn mistakes, but then, you know, they can have some sort of guidance, which is uh, a big help. Um, yeah, you're always going to make mistakes yeah. and you have to make those mistakes to actually learn something, you know, it's trial and error. But at the same time, it's nice to have, you know, an outlets where you might get told a bit of information that might help you, you know, be more efficient or speed up the process with certain things. Yeah. Especially nowadays where everything's so fast paced, you know, you got to be spitting out tracks every every other week and, you know, doing the gigs and social media, camera work, like everything, I do everything yourself. So if you could do any, have anything to help make that more efficient, then it's very beneficial. Yeah. Um, do you think there's a space for everyone to learn? Because you can have people in all in all walks of the industry from beginners who are just getting into it and you can have people who are uh, are really at the forefront of it. Do you, do you think there's a space for everyone to learn something or invest themselves into education and, and learning something? Anyone can uh, go for this one. Yeah, I mean, I think what's really interesting is um, from when I went to university, which probably the same time as you, Luke, was 2010, 2000, well, 11 to 13, I think. Um, what I found was that maybe there was one or two mature students on, on the whole of, you know, the English degree course. And um, looking at the students now that I teach, you know, there are some students that are, you know, in their 30s, some in their 40s. Um, and actually, it's kind of a blessing having them involved because they've got, you know, it, the more the merrier when it comes to um, experience and, and, and knowledge, to be honest. Um, and being able to, I mean, I was just having a conversation with a new presenter who's due to join the station. And I was telling them about the stuff that, that we do um, over at BIM, as with, you know, all the other institutions and saying, you know, there is actually opportunity if you want to hone in on a new craft and just hone that hone that thing that you kind of know, but you need to just brush up on. Yeah. Those things are possible. Um, I think I think people kind of forget that. My mum went back and did an open university course about five years ago. And honestly, it was like a new lease of life for her. That's wicked. <laughs> yeah, 100%. There was definitely on my course, there was definitely a few mature students, 40s, maybe even 50s, because there was one guy who was quite old. But it's like you said, they're just there to brush it up on something or maybe they've been doing, say, like live sound engineering the whole life and they just feel like they could get more out of their um, career. They might decide to just go to uni for a year, a couple of years and just get that information that they feel they're missing. And, you know, even though they've been doing it their whole life, you know, you never stop learning. You're always going to learn new things. And where things are changing, you know, times are advancing, new technologies, new bits of knowledge come out. So there's always going to be new things to learn as yeah. time goes on. Yeah, for sure. That's, that, that's a good point, isn't it? As, you know, speak to someone 10 years ago, if they're at the forefront and didn't learn new technologies, they're, they're going to be so far behind with like just <laughs> trying to stay on top of anything. Um, yeah. Even if they don't want to do things a certain way like you need to know what's going on in the industry in the discourse yeah 100%. Um, definitely for me like i've gone back to this masters um i was 29 i'm 30 now you know people on the course are like 21 in the, in the same media experience um and in terms of just the from within the course I, i've learned a lot from people who are like 10 years younger than me um which has been incredible they've like when i went did my undergrad uh, it was a completely different experience of how people talk uh, and openness and and being and sharing creatively, um, uh, and you know maybe I've I had a certain idea of how people are at that age, um, and then they've opened me up to a completely different way of thinking about things, and they've um, really accepting of me, and, and kind of age hasn't really been a barrier, um, and I've learned a lot from them, uh, which has been a, a real positive to come out of it. Um, that's before even talking about any of the educational aspect of it, um, which again was it's not didn't, it's not really directed to any age at all. It's just here are the facts to learn, here are what can help you, um, and it applies mm. to any age really. Yeah, uh, of course. I mean, I know for me, I'm definitely 
those artists that I used to like be like big fans of back in the day, like producers before I was like, before I established myself when I was like a teenager that I looked up to that now, you know, these people are coming to me for help advice on, you know, tracks, you know, asking for uh, mix down help or like just general advice. And it's, it's really weird because it's like at one point in your life, you were idolizing these people as if they're untouchable. And now they're on a level playing field. So it just, and these people are, you know, 10, 15 years older than me even. So it's just like, you know, never, no matter how old you are, how young, like there's always going to be things to learn. Yeah. Well, for sure. Luke, I've got a question briefly for you. Cause I know um, that, no. I know that you just started doing, or you announced that you were doing DJ tutorials and one-on-ones. Yeah. Um, what kind of age ranges do you get through with that? Um, well, unfortunately they were all about to start during lockdown like uh. literally like <laughs> literally the weekend of um it got cancelled uh. but for that it, it was quite a range um 21 40 um someone called something recently about some lessons and they're like 12 years old you know it's um <laughs> it's someone's uh it's like my aunt is uh so i think it's probably like my second cousin or something but you know the, everyone has a way that they want to get into the industry um or just learn more yeah, and it, it, it seems pretty ageless, really. It, I think it is the, the access um, to technology has become more uniform, or at least you can go somewhere and rent something. It, yeah. it's, not, it's not so far away anymore. Um, well, you've got kids in primary yeah. school that are learning, you know, that are, they're having kind of like incorporating DJ classes into, you know, I was learning Sibelius when I was 12, and they're on, they're on sets of decks. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Same here. If anyone doesn't know, Sibelius is like a a a music writing uh, sc- how do you call it script what do you call music writing oh i see that's how long ago i did it but yeah you write out music but on a computer yeah um yeah man it would have been way more fun to just play with decks um <laughs> yeah <laughs> what we had was a dj button dj dj that was it. yeah that, that, that's what i was thinking then um which actually got me really heavily involved into music so there's definitely a note of um yeah there for teachers yeah, yeah give, give, I guess giving people access to this technology um, really can ignite something in people. Um, I guess, I mean, we've kind of addressed this the whole way through, but I guess people will be a little dubious about paying into stuff um, when they think, oh, there's, you know, I can go and watch an online tutorial or, you know, I can listen to a mate. I mean, why, why should people invest their money Um are they investing should they invest in themselves is is this the approach um uh, and it, it, is it going to be beneficial um anyone can answer well, my question i mean for me i think the thing that clinched it for me because i've always been i've always been someone that maybe didn't make as much money because i preferred to work with independent and and small local businesses or rather local businesses yeah. um and i think the thing that clinched it for me with with where I am with BIM and the stuff that I do with them is, I mean, not only seeing that they definitely put into the cities that they're located in. So there's, you know, what you'd usually get with a small business is the money being reinvested into the local community and BIM as a kind of a corporation make, you know, make damn sure that they work really hard, clearly and openly to invest into um, the local area, make use of local musicians, knowledge um, and that sort of thing. Um, But I think the, the other side of it is, Oh God, I've just forgotten what the other side of it was. Oh yeah, um, the other <laughs> side of it is uh, about making sure that you're using industry professionals. And I think being able to say that there are industry professionals that are at the top of their game, they're rising, they know they've got 10 years experience doing this, they've got 20 years running events um, and being able to, to harness and tap into that, that, you know, that um, understanding and, and knowledge is, you know, is, is the big seller for me. Yeah, for me, it's one of them ones where, yeah, YouTube has a lot of information, especially nowadays compared to, so I started producing when I was 14. YouTube had a lot of information then, so, but not as much as it does now. But there's still that element of being in, in the environment physically, like, and being, you no, know, I went to Union Leeds. So obviously Leeds is a very musically rich city. Therefore, I'm going to all these different club nights, different styles of music at each night all these, meeting all these different people. I've got the facilities at my uni. Everyone that I know is a five, 10 minute walk. 
minute walk away from me so it's just easy to link up and just get things done and you know collaborate and just don't get that experience when you're just at home uh just learning off you know youtube videos and maybe some cheap master classes that you might see advertised but yeah. at the same time it goes back to what i said about the type of person you are so maybe you're the type of person that is better off being at home and just learning it on your own because you have that drive and you know that you can dig for the resources that you would need to learn what you need to learn because my uni course most of the stuff that we learn was stuff that you can information you can find online yourself for free but you don't know what you're looking for until you get to that course and you have the full you know sheet of what you're going to be learning for each year and you have the full breakdown of how everything links yeah like you know starting with fundamental audio principles then going down to you know your mixing and mastery and then just working your way from the fundamentals to the more advanced stuff and I never would have been able to sequence that information myself. Yeah, that's a great point. Isn't it? You know, there's a lot of free stuff out there, but you're going to have to filter through the noise. You know, like what what's important, what's not important. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, university, but any sort of establishment where you can have some sort of structure to a course. Um, it's going to be really beneficial to you. And, and, and you know, you're going to be getting, you know, like taking on board what Danny said, if if you make sure it's um, of an industry standard and of, of people who are involved in the industry, then you're going to know you can trust it. Um, and yeah, that's a really good point, Danny. I didn't even realize that. Um, you might be paying money out to invest in yourself, but then this institution might be also reinvesting into your industry around you. So your industry is going to be better off when you leave that establishment, which is a really cool point. I didn't even know um, that was happening. So that's uh, really enlightened me there. Um, by the way, if anyone's got any questions who are watching, uh, please drop it in the chat. I forgot to mention that already. But um, uh, I mean, one we'll thing just... I will say as well is, you do when you are, if you do decide to do education, you know, make sure if you are physically going to go study somewhere else, make sure it's somewhere that is going to be beneficial for what you are studying. So if you're going to mm -hmm. study music tech, don't go to like a uni like Hertfordshire where there's nothing going on musically in the city that you know that's on your wavelength. If there's for me, Leeds was attractive because I knew what Leeds had to offer. And I knew that I would get more out of being in Leeds than just going, you know, doing the uni course as well. So you have to think about those things as well, because I know a lot of people who spent money on courses and places where they didn't feel like they really got much out of where they were living. So, yeah, that's, that's one of them ones you have to think about as well. Yeah. I think the thing that I thought about just like off the back of that was um, the benefit of of one on one time with tutors. Um, but this links back to back to what you're saying is that you, you kind of just do need to do a little check and check whether the course is relevant, whether it's relevant in the in the location it is. Um, and and that it's somewhere that afterwards you'd be happy to be like, yeah, I, I went and did something there. I spent three years or however long it is studying and in, in kind of engrossing myself in that city. Um, you might be pleasantly surprised, but I would say do if you can do your research, finding out, maybe find out who are the tutors you know, what are maybe their credentials um, for anyone who is looking at getting into it. Yeah, you, you can definitely ask, find out, say, well, you know, I want to do this music production course. Who have you got? And why, why are they so good? Why are they good enough that they should be teaching me? Yeah. Yeah, really cool. Yeah. L look at kind of like the wider scope of it. And I guess it's kind of trying to relate it um, almost back to what, what do you want? What do you want out of this? What are you passionate about? Is where you're going to learn going to give you what you want and how can you um kind of uh make that experience a lot bigger and and get the most out of it like with adrian saying um make make sure the city you can also embrace there and expand it's not just about the education it's it, the, it's the whole thing about it um yeah it's so cool um i guess this question is probably it, it it's important but i guess universities educations and establishments of that are kind of like often at the forefront of um, tackling problems uh, from within the industry um, and teaching uh, better, better routines of practice and taking on board uh, movements, external movements. I guess, especially now, we've seen BLM, Me Too, a lot more talk about diversity and equality in the industry. And for me personally, I think um, not just in in music industry, but in general, I think the more education there is about um, any issues like this, the better it gets because pe people learn um 
kind of what's right and wrong and, and how they should um, refocus their, th their thoughts. Do you think it's important for like uh, education establishment, establishments like this to continue um, being at the forefront of this? Yeah, right, obviously. Um, <clears throat> it's a case of, I mean, for, especially for bigger organisations, um, quite often you'll find that there's a lot of um, red tape and checks that need to be done uh, in order for things to be approved, for messages to be approved. Um, but what's important is that, you know, as universities have, have kind of grown to be, they are hives and places where, um, you know, radical thought and, um, you know, a freedom of expression can take place just as much in the music industry as much as anywhere else. And we know from the music industry that for a long time, it's been, uh, a, you know, straight white middle class people up top and um, taking advantage of, you know, people of color and, um, and the others um, who were lower down. And um, it's been good actually uh, seeing a lot of institutions when they have done, um, taking the initiative, responding, um, you know, in good time and, and, and doing what they can to open a discussion because i think that is yeah. such a key point key, key point yeah yeah especially nowadays you're seeing a lot of organizations being held accountable for any wrongdoings whether it be uh systematic racism or maybe they're not doing their part in supporting you know certain movements or it's just one of the things that like nowadays where you know we have all the, everything online we see everything we know what's going on in every little pocket of the world. You know, these big companies and that they can't hide. They can't, you know, do things un and sweep it under the rug, you know, dirty work. It's all out in the air now. So we're seeing a lot more ch push for like, you know, these companies to operate in a, you know, a transparent way. Yeah. I think transparency is uh, becoming more and more more of a thing now there's there's not a lot of transparency in industries back in the day but now you're seeing a lot more because of this you know the access that people have to information yeah uh so important isn't it it's, it's keeping that discussion going the accountability is so important and kind of that for that just to become the norm is is great and then it, it, it's not a big thing it's like the discussion just keeps continuing and that discussion becomes a normality which seems so in, uh, important Thank you so much, both of you. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't be joined by Mark, but uh, just a bit on that. Uh, he, D he tutors um, DJ courses at Sub Bass Academy. And I, re I went there last year, um, someone who's been working with like DOWs for 15 years. Uh, I switched to Ableton. I hadn't used it in years and I just wanted to get a refresh. I went and did a, uh, a two-day course there and it was wicked. Like I learned so much. So again, ev even though you're might feel very confident um in your abilities you maybe you want to switch softwares or just evolve or adapt um there's places to do it and and there's places like that where mark, where mark teaches um but yeah thank you so much both of you it's been a, a really good decision this does um thank yeah, you danny nice. thank you adrian yeah, um, good, man. and everyone if you want to donate just the descriptions in the link supporting blm uk mind help musicians and women in music and um, thank you so much and i'll see you at three thank you all right see you soon big absolute well done mate thank you so Take much care. you too so so appreciate it speak to you soon